Aloha guys. Welcome to another edition of ATOR Tutorials. Today I am sitting with my iPad Pro. There we go. And we have, what is this? This little PS icon, Photoshop. So Photoshop for the iPad was just recently released. I've um, just got this iPad actually about a week ago and I got Photoshop obviously installed. It's part of the Creative Cloud package for photographers. So easy to just download and be up and running. Um, I'm gonna try to show you Photoshop and this whole iPad experience more from a photographer standpoint. So as you see, I have my Nikon D850 over here. And one of the first things you gotta do obviously is be able to read your card and get it into the iPad or your computer for this example, obviously an iPad. So many may know or not know, but a D850 shoots an XQD card, this little square kind of memory card, and then it has an SD card slot as well. And this Narbox card reader is awesome. I bought mine from B&H, so you know I didn't buy that. I mean, they didn't send it to me. I actually paid for it. But this Narbox card reader right here, it's a USB-C XQD card reader, and it actually has the ability to read micro SD. So there's a micro SD slot if you can't see it and there's an SD card slot as well. So what we would do as a photographer is come back from a shoot. For me, for my example, I don't think I'll utilize this as like a main thing because I got a really nice 5K iMac I edited on. But again, for out and about or traveling and just wanting to maybe cherry pick a couple files and post them, I can go ahead, enter my XQD card and it just depresses in. And from there, on the iPad, you have this little folder for files, and right away it detects in the location, the little Nikon D850, I can click on the root folder, this DCIM folder, and now I have two raw files, this guy with the little green dot, and this file over here. This is a TIFF, this is a JPEG. I'm totally testing this out. I just played around with it today, and I figure why not do a tutorial and bring you guys along with the ride, you know, along for the ride and kind of just see what hiccups I run into. But again, one of the main things is this thing is killer for $50. I bought mine at B&H, as I said. And the great thing with B&H right now for the holidays, they extended their return policy to February 1st. So you can buy something, try it out. I'm definitely not gonna return this, it's a keeper. But with that being said, we see that this is being recognized and the card's reading no problem. Now the first thing we'd wanna be able to do is probably read a raw file from our camera because we're not going to use a Nikon D850 and shoot in JPEG unless we're not too smart. Now I'm just joking, but there's reasons to shoot JPEG. I get it, but I shoot raw always or raw plus JPEG. So let's see what happens. So in this home screen of Photoshop, we basically have, you know, the same kind of look that we have when we're on the desktop version. We have some recent files, create new, import and open. We have some cloud documents. And I'm gonna to go to import and open in the lower left corner. From there, I'm gonna to go to files. And then here, we're gonna see the raw file. And I'm gonna go ahead and select my raw file in Photoshop, mind you. So this is Adobe Photoshop. And let's select the raw file. Oh wait, cannot be imported, unsupported file format. Well, that sucks. So right off the bat, Snapseed can read a raw file, but Photoshop can't. So that kind of blows. So now what? So we can shoot in JPEG, which is obviously not the real way we want to go about this. Or for now, we got to use another app and we can use Snapseed. I'm going to choose Lightroom for a little bit more similarity to what we're used to because essentially the camera raw plugin in Photoshop is the same under the hood back end as the Lightroom plugin or the Lightroom features for raw. So not now. So I'm going to go here. Let me see, where am I? Deleted all photos. I'm gonna go to this lower right-hand corner, this little plus sign, and I'm gonna hit from files. Boom, come on. And I'm using the Apple Pencil 2 or whatever. So I'm gonna hit this NEF file right here in the lower left. And come on, Oop. wait, let me see. Oh, it's because I have it already imported. So here, it's right here. I already have this raw imported. And voila, you can see 
no problem, everything works well. I'm going to actually see if I can, oh, there we go. Oop, wait, hold on a second, bear with me. I'm going to lock exposure. There we go. That's a little bit better. You may not be as easy to see the keyboard, but at least you can see the monitor. But right now I can go and let me see if I can reset this. I don't know how to even do that in Lightroom. If you guys know, let me know. Uh, where do we go? Maybe here? Oh, to open. Here we go. To import. So this is our camera raw. We're bringing it in. This is what it looks like. So now we can go ahead and edit our raw like we would in the camera raw plugin, which Photoshop should have. So we can maybe increase the exposure a little bit. We can maybe go in the color, bump up the saturation, maybe go into effects, play with dehaze a teeny bit, maybe go and bring the shadows a little bit up. Blacks down, something like that. But again, we can play with this more. I just want to show you that this is a workaround for the moment. I think you could use Affinity too, but I really can't stand Affinity Photo. So I'm going to go ahead and hit these little three dots and I'm going to go ahead, or not there, I'm sorry, I'm going to go to this little up arrow and then I'm going to say open in. Come on. I'm going to hit maximum available. Obviously you want to open the full file. And then we're going to go and scroll over or scrub over to Photoshop. So now we're bringing this file into Photoshop. So there we go. We're up and running. We got a raw file converted and we're now in Photoshop. So what would be the first thing I would do? I would hit Command J on my keyboard to duplicate the layer. That doesn't work. So there's no keyboard shortcut yet for duplicate layer. So we'd go over here for that and duplicate layer. But before I'm going to even do that, I'm going to hit Command Z because that does work here. And if you hold down the Option key, I'm, I'm sorry, if you hold down the Command key for a few seconds, you'll see all the shortcuts. And I'm sure there's going to be more to come soon. But I'm going to hit Command Z for the moment, undo that. And we're going to kind of walk through right the left-hand corner side toolbar. So we've got the Home button. Boom. We're going to get out of there. We have the Move tool. So here's the Move tool can move the image, which I don't want to do. I'm going to hit Command Z. But we got to be aware, this little guy, these little touch, touch <coughs> pardon me, this little thing right here, this is our touch gesture, which can be oh, moved around anywhere we want on the screen. I'm going to leave it where it defaults on the lower left-hand corner. But if you go ahead and depress this, it will move constrained. And then if we move up, we essentially get two different options. So we can press it, and then we can move up and we get whoop, dragging. That's interesting. I never saw that. I don't know what that does. But regardless, we can get two different things. We get two moves out of it. We get move constrained or we get duplicate. So if I touch the screen, I'm going to duplicate the layer a bunch of times. Every time I touch it, it's going to duplicate the layer. I'm going to undo out of all that. But just be mindful that this little smart gesture thing has two essential extra moves. And if you press it, You'll see them up in this little blue box right here. So just play around and be mindful and just kind of learn, you know, like I'm doing right now too. We hit the one below. That's our crop tool, our transform tool. So again, I'm going to see it doesn't show me anything. And then if I drag up, it says scale centered. So now I'm, whoop, let me undo that. If I hold this and press up, it will scale centered. I'm going to cancel out of that. And below that, we have our lasso tool. And then we have our, I don't even know what this is. I think it's subtract. Or what is this guy? Dude. I should say what this is. I'm not even sure. I never used that. But lasso tool, circular marquee to the far right. And then we got the square marquee tool. So again, we got those guys going on. If we use our lasso tool, let me see. We can add the selection, and then we can, so here, lasso tool, marching ants, add the selection, and then lasso tool again. So again, just be mindful 
of this little guy, the smart gesture. I'm going to undo that or hit Command D. So that does work for deselect. Below that, we have our brush tool, which I can get to, mind you, by hitting the B key. B. Oh, come on. B we'll br for brush. And the little bracket, left and right bracket key, does control the brush size. So as you see, whoop, wait, why is that not working? Maybe because, oh, I think I have a selection. There we go. So Command Z, I'm going to hit the left bracket key. And you'll see it got smaller. Right bracket key, bigger. So that is a keyboard shortcut that works. X works as well. So we'll toggle from foreground and background color, if you can see, from black to white, or foreground, whatever you have the foreground and background color set at. And when you have this little palette, once you're, say, in the brush tool, you can go and swap and change colors. You can change your brush size. You can dock this, if you see. Boom. I can dock it over here. I can drag it all over the screen. Whoop. So for now, I'm just going to keep it over here where it defaults. But you get all the different little properties that you can do with this. So you got roundness, angle, you can change all the brush tool properties. And then below that, we have our eraser tool, which I never use. But same kind of thing. You can move this around. You can change brush size and all kinds of different things. Opacity, you know, same thing. You could change if you want to use pressure for size or pressure for opacity. Then below that, we have the gradient tool which is this guy, and then the paint the, the fill paint bucket. So boom, which I never use either. I'm going to get out of that mess. But I do use the gradient tool quite a bit when I'm doing layer masks for like black and white. So say I you know want to reveal and conceal something, I do that. So below that, and I don't even know if I hold down this with the gradient tool, it doesn't seem to do anything. Then below that tool, we have the Spot Healing Brush tool and the Clone Stamp tool. So this is J is for the Spot Healing Brush, and it's the same as on a desktop. And S is for Clone Stamp, and you get the different properties. Usually when you source for Clone Stamp, you hold the Option key down. For this, it doesn't work. So this little, what are, I forgot what you call these guys. They're um, the little touch gestures. So if you hold the touch gesture down, I'm going to first duplicate the layer over here just because I want to. Oop, there we go. And if I hold this down, as you see, there's a cross here. And now I can go and clone if I wanted to. I don't need to, but say I want to go and clone this guy out right here. I'll source right here. Oop, that didn't work. Let me see. I think I got the brush to set to something. So pressure for opacity. I don't want to use that. That's what's kind of messing me up. There we go. So I'm going to source. No. Let me try one more time. Source. Something like that. I wouldn't use this. I would use a spot healing brush tool and just go doop. And that's it. So I don't find it as easy to use the clone stamp tool with this version of Photoshop, with my Wacom stylus and regular everything, I feel fine. But whatever, play around, let me know what you feel. Below the clone stamp tool and the spot healing brush tool, we have the crop tool. Um, so here's that again. So we can crop constrained. So this little smart gesture thing still does something. But again, crop tool, pretty simple. simple. I'm not going to go into that. Then T will work for the type tool. So if I'm, if I'm on B for brush, I can hit T and it will move down to the text tool. From there, if I select, I can go ahead and change my font. It will open up this layer properties. I can change the font type. <clears throat> I can change color, go to white. Maybe type in a bigger size if I wanted to, do 400. And then there I'll type something. Let me see. So do a tort photography.
hit enter, but that doesn't do it. So I'm just going to click. See, I, I actually tapped on my table right now because I'm so used to <laughs> using a stylus. So I can move that down there, for example. And then from here below that, we have this little guy, which we can import new fi files or go to the camera roll, go to our libraries, take a picture if we want to bring in some other file to work with. Below that, we have our eyedropper tool. So we can't use it for like an info palette because there's no info palette. So if I hit I, let me see if it works. I, no, I doesn't do the eyedropper tool. So that's another keyboard shortcut not working, but I can use it to sample colors. There we go. Now I got, whoop, let me go to, oh, I got to be on my brush tool. Come on. I don't know why that's not working. There we go. So again, even while using this for the last week, there's still some hiccups that doesn't seem to make a lot of sense. With this little color palette, you can just slide or you can hit X to toggle. Or again, you just swipe down. You can swipe down with your finger to switch between. So over here in the top right hand corner now, we have this little question mark. So this browses tutorials, which is nice. So we got six tutorials, nothing too impressive, but whatever. So let me see, I'll go back to what I was working on. And then we have take a tour, which is fine. If you're not familiar, you may want to do all of them. I watched a tutorials too, and you know, semi helpful. Uh, view gestures, so you can view the different gestures. I don't haven't even played with the gestures too much yet. You can go and view the touch shortcut, so that's kind of important. So you see it says primary and secondary. So when we touch it, this is primary, and when we drag outward, this is secondary. So you get one or two different additions for each, you know, tool. Um, you can view keyboard shortcuts. And it will show you what we have and what we don't have. We don't have Command J for duplicating layer, for example. We don't have Command M for new curve layer. We don't have Command L for new levels layer. A bunch of little stuff. I for info. Uh, let me see. And you can also just hold the Command key down. And it will show you those as well. And then what else do we have? Photoshop user guide. Community who uses a user guide. We have community form and we have send feedback. So send feedback is good. If you guys see something that you're not liking, make sure you let the Adobe form and community know. So again, I said that I wanted smart objects. That's pretty huge. Obviously camera raw to be able to open raw files. That's extra huge. You know, certain things like unsharp mask. I don't even, you know, that should be here for sure. But send feedback, let them know. This is how these, you know, grow because people actually are, they're showing the Adobe community and forum and developers and engineers that there are people using it and they really want to see these features next. So just go ahead and take the time to do that. It's worthwhile. And then below that little question mark, we have this. This is going to be to toggle our quick little view layer mode on and off. And then if we hit the little, little, it's like two little squares with little whatever, that's going to basically give us the layers palette we're kind of used to looking at. So it's going to show you a little bit more traditional. This is a little bit more iPad kind of quick view, which can be toggled back and forth on off. This is going to give us our layer properties so we can lower opacity and blend modes if we're doing something creative, but not with this right now. And it's going to have where we're going to have effects right now. This device isn't supported on this. So that feature isn't supported on this device yet. So there's no effects. There's no smart filters. You show you the dimensions. I'm going to undo that. And then below here, there's a little plus sign. And if you hold down with your pencil or your finger, so I'm holding and we can do a new layer. We can do a new adjustment layer. We can do a new empty group or paste as new layer, which I'm not going to do, but we let's do like a new adjustment layer. So we can maybe do say levels. And this is a workaround for me for not having curves. So say I want to add a little red to it to maybe make the sand pop a little bit. You know, I can go and maybe tweak that, add a little red. 
so we have kind of a way to get to our channels essentially um, we can layer the opacity. I mean, we could change the opacity and toggle that back and forth from zero to a hundred. But again, this is essentially these three things, different layer views. And when you see this, like this is the mask, obviously you just got to swipe and you'll see what kind of what's there. So this is a levels adjustment layer, but this is how you get back and forth in this view to the mask and to the actual, whatever it is. Um, let me see. Where are we now? Okay, below that, this is just the little eye icon to toggle on and off. Depending on what layer we're on to, it's gonna affect things differently. So I'm gonna go to a pixel layer, and then here we have the ability to make a mask, which I'm not gonna do. There we go. We have a clipping mask. We have this, which is our filters, which we're pretty limited right now. We have Gaussian blur which I honestly don't use that much ever anymore. I did before at one time. So we have Gaussian blur and we have invert, which is another pretty useless thing for me at least. So we're gonna undo that. And then below this, we got all of our layer actions. So we can lock layer, we can delete a layer, rename the layer, add a clip adjustment, begin multi-select mode, which is kind of handy. Say we wanna go ahead and select and maybe, you know, merge visible and just get all of those collapsed, and then I can duplicate layer again. So be aware of this and just kind of explore and play, but this is gonna essentially show, you know, where you'd flatten the layer, merge down, merge visible, things like that that are handy. And that's essentially it, honestly. I mean, a lot of the keyboard shortcuts don't work yet. I mean, some do, thankfully. I mean, at least some are there, like hitting J for a spot healing brush tool, that's great hitting S for clone stamp tool, that's great. You know, I mean, there's few things that I just wish it would have. Obviously like the camera raw plugin, that would be major. But, um, you know, another thing too, when you're going here, I'm just trying to show you a few things that I've kind of learned along the way. I can scrub here if I have the move tool selected. I don't think it will work if I, maybe it will. Wait, hold on a second. If I'm in a brush tool, will it still work? Yeah, it will. But if I'm on any of the tools, I think for the most part, if you scrub up here where it says like the percentage, it will be a one way to kind of go in and see, say maybe, oh, I wanna go and, you know, retouch these guys out, hit J, get the spot healing brush tool, zap that out, zap that out, zap that out. And you can see this is kind of, whoop, nope, <laughs> hit command. So I think, Command zero would be nice, but I can't do that. So if I double tap, no, that's not working. I think it's double tap here. Oop, shoot, what did I do? That's one thing I don't even know if there's a history palette. I don't think there is. So that would be another request I would want. I don't know what I did, how I duplicated that. There we go. So somehow I duplicated the layer or something or moved it. But if you zoom in and then double tap it will bring it back to fill the screen but I think eventually you probably could get a pretty good workflow with this once it starts coming out with some you know like little supported keyboard shortcuts that's going to be huge like even this I want to hold down the space bar to move I don't know if I can do that no I can't because it doesn't do anything I would just scrub with the move tool, but normally I'd hold the space um, bar down on my keyboard and use my Wacom stylus. And then normally like say this guy in here in the water, I'd hit J, boom, get him out of there. Maybe make the brush, let me see, a little bit bigger. And again, be conscious too about these guys, like the use pressure for size and sample all layers. All of these are going to be kind of important. Oop, let me see. And see, like right now, it doesn't feel, it's like weird. I don't even know what happened. See, I moved, somehow I moved this. But now where is, why am I moving it? See what it's doing? It's like duplicate. Oh, I'm moving just the top layer. 
So I'm going to merge visible. And then there should be a way, I don't know where this went, where the little percentage thing went away. That's weird. It's kind of cool because I actually wanted to see this more of in a full screen view. Let me see if I go to home, go back, and there it is again. So I don't know how I got rid of this. I'm going to hit J again, just to kind of see. And then double tap. <laughs> oh God. So I don't know how this is moving or why this is moving, but that again is a one little thing to be conscious of. So I don't know. <clears throat> there's, there's a lot of hope in this and I, I hope they really are progressive with updating it and adding new features like the camera raw and unsharp mask and some of the other, you know, things we're all familiar with. Curves, layers, info palette would be nice, but um, smart objects would be nice, Adobe. But one thing you can't go wrong with, and again, I have this keyboard, this um, smart keyboard cover from Apple. I bought the original one first and I realized there's no way I'm gonna be able to work with Photoshop without a keyboard, because it's pretty challenging to only use, you know, the pencil with the gestures for me at least. I'm so used to using a keyboard. Like if I didn't have this with the limitations that this has right now, I'd kind of lose my mind, I think. It would be really, really challenging. But at least I kind of have some similarity and familiarity with this that I feel kind of comfortable. Like I could kind of work and be all right. But with that being said, subscribe guys. This is not necessarily super polished. I just wanted to go and give you a little you know, rundown from a photographer. Again, D850, this Narbox XQD card reader is freaking awesome. I mean, it really is slick and for $50 and USB-C speed, you can't go wrong. Um, so that's it for now. I will talk with you guys. Thank you.